It isn't often when a game that doesn't have the words Manhunt or Grand Theft Auto in the title can cause a great deal of controversy. Surprisingly enough, in the case of the title I'm about to review, the internet hubbub wasn't at all influenced by politics, at least not the ones that make laws for society. On behalf of ProjectCUE.com, I'm Justin Joseph, here with our video review for Kane and Lynch, Dead Men. So players take on the role of the first half of the game's title, Kane, who is an ex-mercenary on death row. When he's on a bus headed to what we can presume to be his execution, along with the other major character, Lynch, all of a sudden chaos grips the situation. A group known as the Seven helps the two escape their transport, but only because Kane apparently once screwed them over on a big job that was worth a load of money. He has three weeks to, to recover and return it, or else his estranged wife and daughter are to be killed. This plot concept is very cliched, but the characters help to make it a bit more engaging. It's unfortunate that the scriptwriters had to rely so much on obscenities to get the characters' thoughts across, but their general pissed-off attitude is understandable despite the rather childish delivery. At its core, though, Kane and Lynch is a third-person shooter, and a decent one at that. Just bear that adjective in mind, though, because this game is absolutely riddled with design and execution problems. First is the cover system, which isn't particularly helpful. You have to position your body perfectly so Kane sticks to whatever you're trying to hide behind, but even when you manage that, you're faced with more obstacles. If the angle at which you're firing at an enemy isn't what the game wanted, you aren't hitting him. Also, the collision system just has very odd hitboxes, because while enemies can somehow penetrate your cover to still hit you, or damage you as your head is undesirably displayed over a lot of your cover, it turns into a wholly frustrating experience. If that weren't bad enough, at times when your reticule is clearly on an enemy's body, the object of your cover somehow manages to absorb your bullets anyway. Thankfully, taking down your foes with the game's nice array of weaponry is satisfying just as, as it is with most other shooters, but that's just the foundation, and Kane and Lynch doesn't build off that. The AI is also nothing impressive, because if it's not your teammates running out into the open like idiots, forcing you to constantly yell at them to come back and hear their obscenities or snide remarks as a result, it's the enemies that just stand still, not knowing you're five feet away. While I respect that there's a combat command system for your squad, it's pointless if it doesn't actually help you. All of these problems are slightly made up for in part due to the crowd element, good graphics, and decent sound effects. In the dance club and prison missions, you have to realistically peel your way through unsuspecting bystanders to arrive at your objective, and while they can be gunned down without your being punished, it is pretty neat. Ken and Lynch also emphasizes a realistic and cartoony style when it comes to the character models and mission environments, which have their strong and weak moments. Audio-wise, the music really isn't there, aside from the main menu theme, but the weapons sound like they should, and the effects like explosions are also pleasing. And as stated before, the voiceovers are a bit over the top with the excessive cursing and whatnot, but the quality is still there. When you aren't putting up with a crappy cover system and horde of other issues, you can try to enjoy Fragile Alliance, the game's online multiplayer mode. To put it as simple as possible, you're a member of an up to 8 total team, and the objective is to collect as much cash as possible in the map while taking out the AI security forces. However, the main draw is derived from the mode's name, because at any time, a participant can turn on another by killing him or her. Doing so allows you to take that player's share of the group's money to be yours exclusively, but you have to watch out for the possibility of another teammate making you pay the price. Or, when that downed teammate responds as the law enforcement side, that player can attempt to exact revenge and still collect a finder's fee. It's fairly entertaining the first few times, but having to be constantly on your toes no matter what side you're on, and the ability to camp so easily can be only tolerated for so long before you lose patience. Still, it's worth checking out, just be warned of the concept of greed if you do. So again, Kane and Lynch Dead Men, while a decent third-person shooter, is a victim of a plethora of problems which drag down just about every facet of the game, but it does manage to not be bad. That's why, after a lot of thought, I've given this game a 6.9 out of 10 for Project CUE. For more information, please view the review on our website, projectcoe.com, and look forward to my next within the next week or two. Thanks everyone for your time, and stick with us for future updates.